Hiya, I'm Dave, and this is Dave's Learning Lesson. Alright, so uh, the solo to so dull. Uh, I guess first things first, let's go over what's happening behind the solo and like the foundation of the song. So right here is Jim Bob. Yeah, I don't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> so here's B flat. Uh, next was gonna be F. Then C minor. And then E flat major seven. Yeah, yeah, E flat major seven, cool. So that's pretty much what's going on. It's got this rocking kind of feel to it. So the strumming pattern for those chords is gonna be down, down, up, up, down, down, up. And that's for all those chords. Listen again. Down, down, up, up, down, down, up. 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 You get the idea. So next up, the actual solo and the actual lead line. So here I am. Uh, starting on the root of the song, B flat. So that's third fret of the G string. Then we're gonna go to C, which is the fifth fret of the G string. All of it's gonna be on the G string. Next is gonna be D, seventh fret. Then I'm gonna go back down the way I came. Five, three, right? Next up is gonna be 10. And then a little slide from that D to C, seven to five. Nice, next up, we're gonna go back down to our B flat. So all together. Right, okay, next is the like, I'm trying to go my own. So again, we're starting that next part on the B flat, third fret of the G string. Next is gonna be G. Just uh, playing the 12th, 12th fret here, full octave. So G, F, G, 12, 10, 12, 5, which is going to be C, D, or 7, and then right back up to 10, okay? So let's go over once again everything we got so far. Okay, next we're gonna go back to our B flat. Third fret, next up, five for C, seven, back down the way we came, like at the start. Now we start going down instead of ascending the notes, we wanna bring them down. So three, five, three, five, seven, two. That's where we're starting to go down. Then we're gonna do like a little na 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 na, and that's gonna happen right on this two and three, right? Da na na na. There you go. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. A little semitone switch. Back down to a G, and then landing. And I'm not flipping you off. This is this is the note in the song. We're going up to a ten, which is an F. And that's where the solo ends. So let's go through that all one more time. Again, there's where we start descending. Remember that na 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 na? Right there, right? Bingo bango, you got a solo. Again, the solo all on this, all on this guy right here, all on this D string. Only one finger you need. Well, uh, two, two fingers, only two fingers you need here. So if you're a two finger guy with a one string guitar, this is the solo for you. All right, so let's talk gear. So uh, the guitar I'm using first and foremost. So this is a uh, Fender Tele, uh, Mexican made. 
It, uh, it does the trick. Everything I needed to do, it can and will do. Uh, a lot of things that I've swapped out on here, I like black hardware a lot. Tusk nut up here, black. Black string tree, black saddles, black uh, control cover thingamajig, black pick guard. They don't make uh, fender black uh, locking tuners, so I'm kind of stuck with that. I just want one knob. I want it to do everything. I want it to kill my volume. I want it to go all the way up. Almost always it'll stay all the way up and I'll use a volume pedal if I want to bring one to a show and I can do swells like that. I really don't do a lot of swells, so there's not a lot of need. Um, I have this little kill switch here. So on, off, whoop de doo I use the cheap quick and dirty strings. I went to a guitar building school and they told us uh, on the first day, uh, we asked what strings should we buy? They said the cheapest strings you can get. Cause honestly, your tone is shaped by your strings, but a lot of it isn't. It's your amp, it's what the sound guy does with the sound that you give him, it's your pedals a lot. If you have a preamp on your board, you can really shape your sound like that. So that's what I prefer to do. The strings that are on here right now are super slinky. Ernie Ball, yeah, there we go. Um, so the, the the purple pack. So that's what I use on this guy, but really cheap strings will get you really far. And I actually did, uh, when I bought it, there was a stock neck pickup in here, but I really like having all my tones in front of me so I can just kind of let this guitar do its thing and uh, really let all the effects from my tone, like the shaping of my tone, be in front of me. Um, big, big thing about this guitar that shapes the tone and the sound is the stickers and the wombo. You need to put the wombo on your guitar, man. Wombo, study of wombology. Uh, up here, we got, uh, I drew that. That's my, <laughs> yeah, that's my picture. Uh, that's, that's my work. Uh, over here, we got Wario and then some other shit. <laughs> uh, boom, that's the, that's the guitar. So let's talk about other stuff. So. My buddy Jake actually designed uh, this Wario sticker here. Shout out to Jake. He's really, really cool. Designed stickers. So uh, I really don't know what his company is called, but check out a Jake that makes stickers. <laughs> cool. So let's talk about uh, my tone through uh, the Sodal Solo. So what I use here for almost, it's on for the whole set really, um, is this Joyo American Sound. And it's just a cheap ass preamp that really, really makes Fender amps and Fender guitars come through. If you haven't tried one of these pedals through, an, uh, through a Fender uh, guitar and a Fender amp, you, sir, are fooling yourself. Uh, it sounds beautiful. So again, without, then let's turn this guy back on. A lot beefier, and again, because I only have that one knob, I get a lot of bite, so you gotta boost the low end a little bit. Um, let's talk about what I use next. So we gotta boost that compressor right here. Uh, again, cheap as fuck Joyo pedal. Uh, it does what you need to do, you know? If you're getting a lot of hiss from your pedals, it's probably because they're super cheap. I got really lucky. The guy who was soldering that day, I guess, took some meth. Sick. Um, let's talk about how I'm getting this. Uh, actually, no, first let's do chorus. So I use this uh, MXR analog chorus. And uh, here, one more time, let's add some sound. So again, without. And let's add that guy back in. Sounds the same. So it, it, some may say it sounds the same. <laughs> but what we're adding here is a little bit of depth. If you see what's pumped up all the way here, levels the exact same. Rate of the chorus is really, really low just because I want the guitar to sound very deep. I want it, the only time when I want it to hear sound like it's two different guitars playing out of tune is a very, very short amount of time. Like literally almost not at all. Boost the low and the high and then super deep depth. Let's see what happens when I bring this rate up though. Gets really Leslie sounding, right? So you want to bring that rate real low just so you get that deep kind of sound. It's really subtle, nothing too big. Let's talk about how I'm getting this pitch effect. So I'm using an Electro Harmonics EHX pitch fork, and then I'm setting it to one octave in each way. You can set the octave right here. So again, the guitar without. And let's turn this guy back on. So again, that adds a ton of dynamic to your sound, and uh, I really, really like using it. A lot of, um, like, Royal Blood uses that a lot. Not that, really, but, like, the Digitech Whammy. I'm just poor, so I use that. I uh, guess the job done. So, uh, yeah. Good time. Good stuff over here. All right, kiddos. 
Thanks for watching. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip.